Hello and welcome back to another episode of Teaching Partner. Today's video is about assessments. Whether you are an administrator, supervisor or teacher, you have heard the terms formative assessments and summative assessment. Of course, they both are very essential parts of any curriculum map. But what do these terms actually mean? In this video, let's have a look and try to understand both kind of assessments. And let's compare them and discuss some examples as well. We will also discuss how can we make these assessments really impactful. I want to begin my discussion with a quote of a very famous educationist, Paul Black. According to him, when the cook tastes the soup, that's formative assessment. When the customer tastes the soup, that's summative assessment. The distinctions and lines between these two type of assessments can often be blurred and misunderstood. Let's compare and contrast formative and summative assessment to understand an exact and true view of the difference between both types. In simple words, formative assessment means assessment for learning. It means through formative assessment, we can do improvement in our learning process. So the results can help teachers plan instruction to meet the students current needs. Whereas the summative means assessment of learning, it means that let's see how much students learn throughout the journey. The result of these assessments are for evaluation or accountability. Let's talk about some example of formative and summative assessments. So in formative assessments can include in class discussions, clicker questions, low stakes group work, weekly quizzes, one minute reflection after writing assignments, homework assignments, surveys and so on. In other hand, summative has instruction created exams, standardized test, final projects, final essay, final presentations, final reports and final grades. Let's compare formative and summative assessment through a Venn diagram. So you can see here the formative are the assessment which can carry out to help inform the learning in the moment during the classroom. Formative assessment definitely as I said to you, it's a continuous and informal method and it is central to every class. If you use correctly the formative, it will have a very high impact on a current learning and help you guide your instructions and teaching. For example, you are taking quizzes in the class and you are creating diagrams or charts, a small homework you have given or a small classwork has been given, even poll and surveys are a part of formative assessment. Whereas the summative as compared to formative is not a very continuous process. It is done at the end of a certain journey and it is often measured against a set standard. Summative assessment can be thought of as helping to validate the check formative assessment. It is a periodic measure of how children are overall progressing in their work. It's include end of year assessment, midterms of term exams, end of term portfolios, etc. Both are used as an assessing tools, both required a proper feedback and both assist in future lesson planning. Let's move to the final part of the video. How can we make formative and summative assessment really impactful? So let's try to create a checklist. As a teacher, we need to see either we are following it or not. So check number one, predefined learning goals or success criteria. So teachers should give a very clear idea about the learning goals and success criteria. The teacher should share clearly what is his or her expectation from the students about the course. Number two, increase rigor. Practicing formatting assessments help teachers collect information that indicates students' individual needs. Once teachers understand what students need to be successful, they can create a rigorous learning environment that will challenge every student. This means teacher will evaluate progress with the formative assessment and gradually align the target to make it more successful next time. Number three, technical and motivational feedback. This check is very important. Providing students regular feedback, both technical, technical means per subject, for example, science, you can write down which formula or which certain procedure he needs to focus. In mathematics, you need to write down what mathematical calculation is very important and so on. And same time, motivational feedback is also very important. So as I said to you, technical means as per the subject and the criteria and motivational means a supportive feedback. This can be done as verbal and written 
on progress towards their goals in the primary function of the formative assessment. Check number four, increase the student's engagement by differentiated instructions. A close analysis of formative assessment data allows teachers to examine their instructional practices to determine that what procedure is working and what is not. What works for one group of students may not work for the another group. Check number five, peers and self-assessment. It helps the students develop lifelong skills in assessing and providing feedbacks to each other and also equips them with a skill to self-assess and improve their own work. Number six, data-driven decisions. Using the data gathered from frequent learning checks empowers teachers to make sound informed decisions grounded in data. Number seven. And finally, the development of evidences, I mean portfolios. It simply means collecting enough evidences to demonstrate competence of the students. This is required to create the portfolio of the students. Authentic evidences are important, not only for the students progress, also it can be declared at program exits as authentic. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this video is very useful for you. So thank you very much. If you have any question, query or you need any support for making a decision, don't hesitate to write an email to the teaching partner at gmail.com. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Goodbye.